What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogajan, aka The Seattle Data Guy. Today, we're going to finally do what I've been trying to do for the last few months, which is dig into Palantir. Thank you so much to Codestrap and all the great people at Palantir for setting this up. It's taken a little bit of time, but I know that's just how things work. So finally, I can actually get into Palantir and see how it works. So for today, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little quick spin with Palantir. We're going to connect it to some data externally, uh, pull it in, create some syncs, and maybe do some more stuff on top of that. But let's dive in, shall we? So here we are on the home screen of Palantir. You can see here's where we kind of have all of the basically workspaces and projects that we have developed. You'll also see that Coach Trap's uh, workspace is here because he has shared it with me and I have done nothing to help him thus far. I feel a little bad about that. But basically, um, what we're going to first start out with is creating a data connection. So you'll actually see here, obviously, there's a bunch of tools I can use. Data connection is the tool I'm going to go to first. Now, you can already see that I've made a few connections, but we're going to make a new one just so you can see the process of making a connection. So we're going to hit a uh, new source to create a new source. And you're going to see a few options here. These aren't all the options. These are just the ones they've made available to me. But um, we're going to create a big query connection. So let's just go through that. Um, you can set up an agent or just a direct connection, which is what we're going to do because I'm not going to go through the whole process. So you go select. And then from here, you can just hit continue. Uh, this is going to be big query again. I've made a few big query connections as I've been testing this. Um, big query three. Uh, I just, even though I deleted two, it was still there though. Then you're going to choose a folder to put it in. So all projects. And then we're going to go to data sources. Um, we're just going to save it here. So big query three um, data sources. And then from here, you can create source. And from here, you can make sure you actually identify what project ID you're setting up. And that is a good thing. Um, otherwise, you're going to forget which one you pick. So from here, you're just going to post your JSON credentials. And one thing I do kind of wish would be a little bit different is uh, I wish there was a test connection button here. And then it just assumes that it works. So when I create save and continue, then I can get a new sync. And basically those syncs is what we're going to create here in a second. So we're going to go back to my projects. We're going to go to my workspace. We're going to go to data sources. And then in here, I'm just going to create a new sync based off the stack overflow data set that I already have created. And click here. Um, you can see I already have a few. So I've pulled in stack comments, stack questions, um, stack overflow posts, which I figured out is not, uh, or at least recently has not been updated for a long time. So uh, stack comments, stack questions, it's really more stack posts. Um, and I'm going to pull in stack answers. So I'm going to create a sync. And here you can see you have options on how you actually um, upload the data. You know, is it a snapshot, which is what I'm going to choose, um, a pen, or you can update. So replace existing files. And then from there, you can see you can do similar things that you would see in Databricks, which is you know set up a schedule, some build policies, different um, ideas as well. Um, but for here, we're just going to do straightforward pull, and we're going to put together a query here for that. So we're going to use this query here that I've just posted. We're just going to take a subset of this data because I don't want to completely blow up um, the data that they're letting me use. Um, and we're going to take it from post answers. And I'm just going to do a select star all. So we're going to hit here, create sync. Oh, you know what I just remembered? See, I always forget this, and this is something else I do kind of wish was a little bit different. Um, in terms of like creating a new data set, I can't just hit create sync. So if I hit create sync, it thinks it's a duplicate data set. And there's nowhere here, at least to my knowledge, that I can rename this data set. So I can't rename it here. Um, and I really wish that existed. Uh, that, that really should just exist here. Like, hey, where do you want to put this data set? Um, and maybe it's somewhere here, but I don't see it very easily. Um, and I think it should exist. So basically... You can kind of set this up. So by default, the output data set uh, blah, 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 is placed into some sub subfolder. But you have to kind of set it up to go somewhere. So I actually need to create a data set first. So let me go do that. So I can go here now and go existing data set, continue. And I can look for this data sources, stack answers. So now once I have this selected, now it's going to go somewhere. So I can actually point it to somewhere. Okay, so now the sync is created. So this is essentially like if you ever work with similar solutions, kind of like a Fivetran kind of set up for a sync. Um, you can now hit run and this will manually run it. Um, I can actually open this build details. And this is really nice. Like again, like the, the amount of logging, the amount of integration here, um, that is what I think Palantir has on a lot of other solutions. Um, it is the fact that it is um, well integrated. Like that's that's the thing. Um, everything is connected. So it's going to tell me if this is right or wrong. We'll see if I'm wrong. Um, I have done this wrong uh, plenty of times. 
So we'll see if this actually loads. Uh, basically, we'll know it's kind of right when it, it after it hits starting attempt one, it'll say something like uh, loading data or loading uh, pages like zero of 23. Um, I think this might be close to a gig of data, so it, it might take a little bit. Okay, I, uh, I, I kind of just rebuilt things um, and it looks like this might be working. I, I shrunk the data too. It might've been like a data size issue. Okay, cool. It succeeded. This is great. Um, thanks all for, for waiting. I, I had to kind of like test it a little more. So we have this working. Um, so now you'll see um, this has succeeded. So let's go to the data set and kind of check this out. So let's go to workspaces, data sources, stack answers. So it's going to give you a preview here in a second. Um, so it gives you some idea of kind of what exists. Um, I didn't take a huge chunk. I, I shrunk the data down because um, I do have like one gig somewhere else. So maybe maybe that's what was the issue. So as you can see, you can just preview the data set, get a good idea of kind of what it looks like, you know, look at the IDs, look at the body, things of that nature. So I also have some other data sets that we're going to look uh, in here. So if you look over here, I have stack questions. So you can see these are the actual questions. So the title, the ID, and body, things of that nature. And we're going to attach that to comments. So let's now make an actual transform. So we're going to build a transform here um, and then kind of create a data set afterwards. And again, we're going to have to create a data set. So let's go do that. Um, I've already kind of tested this out a few times, as you can see, because I just want to make sure it worked. So let's just create a new data set to where all this data is going to go with this transform. So let's create this. We're just going to call this stack post comments. And now we're gonna take this and we're actually going to create a transformation. So for this, we're gonna go into the SQL transformations here. And I'm, I'm using SQL for now. Uh, I need to ask some questions specifically about how to bring in multiple sources um, for the Python transformations. Um, but SQL is really straightforward. So, and you're gonna see I've already kind of created one and tested it out. Um, but what you see is you create a table. And when you create this table, you actually tell it where it's gonna go inside your foundry project. Some quick things about that is uh, I did find you need to make sure that this uh, essentially lives where your repository lives and similar things with these stack questions and comments. This, they all need to live in the same place, which makes sense, but it took me a little bit. I was like, oh, I tried to have a sec separate project for this and it, it didn't work out. So post uh, comment plus. And then again, I've already pulled in these data sets here. You can kind of see stack questions, stack comments, as I showed uh, earlier. Um, and I'm just pulling in a few of these things from C. Uh, or comments and then some things from uh, Q just to kind of show you how it's all going to look like in the end. Uh, then I'm going to hit preview just to kind of show you a quick preview of this data set. Okay. And as you can see, the query works very well. We pulled in all this data. This is great because you can test it out before you run the transform. You can do the same thing in the Python uh, transforms. I did do it just for baseline test. Um, same thing works. So from here, we, we can just hit uh, merge changes because apparently I've got some sort of change that I need to fix. Okay. That's going to mix it, uh, fix it. Okay, it's going to fix it, and I'm going to hit build, and hopefully this doesn't break. Okay, we can see that the build um, initialization has succeeded, as has checks. I have had them fail before, so it's good to see that they've succeeded. Great, it has now succeeded, so we can actually now check out um, the, the, the lineage. So it's loading some other stuff, but I'm more interested in the lineage. So if I go back, we can see the two tables that created it, and then if we go back even further, we can see that both these... Um, come from Stack Overflow, my Stack Overflow data set. And then as I keep building, for example, if I build a report off this, it will continue to kind of connect. And again, that really is the benefit of Palantir is that everything's connected. So as you build things, it's it's all in one place. Um, there are data lineage tools that exist out there, but they're kind of piecemeal and they don't always cover everything. So this is really kind of nice um, in terms of tracking all the changes that you make. And I would love to know if you have any questions off this Stack Overflow data set. You can go check it out. Um, BigQuery has it open for free. Because um, in the next few videos, I'd like to kind of build off of this, you know, take this initial maybe pipeline, maybe build some others, um, build some reports off of it. So if you have questions off of this data set um, and want to see how maybe Palantir hound, and maybe you want to see how Palantir handles it, uh, you know, put them in the comments below and I will try to do that. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching this video and getting a quick understanding of how to connect to BigQuery and pull data out and do some of your initial transformations in Palantir. With that, guys, I will see you later. Thank you and goodbye.